We are here at ASCO and we are here to talk about an entirely oral regimen for relapsed or relapsed refractory multiple myeloma. And to discuss this phase one, two study, I am with Dr. Rita Krishnan, who is an MD and director of the multiple myeloma program at the Judy and Renard Briskin myeloma program. At, uh, and a professor in the Department of Hematology and Hematopoietic Cell uh, Transplantation in the City of Hope in Southern California. Now, this is an interesting com combination that you've got here. What are you studying specifically? So what we're studying is people in advanced refractory relapse myeloma, and the question really becomes, can we give those patients a regimen that is obviously efficacious, but not toxic and convenient is another big factor in terms of certainly we have a lot of good IV drugs available. You know, you start telling patients, well, you need to come in, this is the schedule, and the you enthusiasm. Don't get doing exactly. That. So the enthusiasm goes down. So if we can combine efficacy with convenience, you know, we have something that's very attractive to patients. So this was a trial that was um, sponsored, well, I wouldn't say sponsored, but really um, set up through the Multiple Myeloma Research Foundation. And so that enabled us really to work with multiple centers. So Sarah Can and Emory Mayo Clinic were, were big participating sites in this trial. And this trial was designed for people who had become refractory to lenalidomide. So something obviously very commonly used. Patients also had, had to have a prior proteasome inhibitor. So it really, I think, was reflective of a patient population that you see as so a real world scenario, which is the other thing we wanted to sort of try and capture. Um, and this is ixazomib, right? Exactly. So and it, it's, it's there essentially to stop the growth of cancer by interfering with proteasomes? Exactly. So ixazomib is a, what we call a proteasome inhibitor, yes. And it was the first oral proteasome inhibitor approved last year. And you're giving it with dexamethasone and... Palidomide? And pomalidomide. So pomalidomide is an immunomodulatory agent that's been around probably since around 2012, 2013 it was approved. So how many patients have you looked at so far? Um, Obviously it's phase one, two. Right. So we actually have completed enrollments. We have 32 patients. So despite the patients are still very early into treatment, we're very encouraged to see these responses. So you know, the data we presented showed that 44% of patients had a response to the regimen. And obviously, we hope as they get further and further into the treatment cycles that we can see things improve more. I mean, in some of these patients, they were more than 50% were dual refractory, and obviously early into their treatment course when they, they just weren't responding to therapy. So this is a difficult group of patients. Absolutely, I think exactly, you summed it up. The dual refractory group we know is a challenging group to treat. And, to be able to treat them with this regimen, and toxicity also was quite favorable. You know, and that very was my manageable. next question. <laughs> so what did you find? So I guess more what I would say is what we didn't find, which was a good thing, what we had worried. You know, obviously you give a regimen that's entirely pills, you worry, are you gonna have a lot of, right. of GI toxicity, nausea, diarrhea, we, and we didn't see that. So that was very encouraging. Second thing you, you certainly worried about is are you going to get additive toxicity? So neuropathy, again, being a big thing that you patients worry about, we worry about, and we didn't see any increase in neuropathy. So that was also extremely encouraging. Um, we did see some hematologic toxicity, not unexpected, but it was certainly manageable. So overall, I would say the regimen was extremely well tolerated. And I think that's allowed us, I can tell you for ourselves, we have older patients, some in the mid-70s on the trial, doing very well, who is sort of eight or nine cycles into it. Now, in the case of the patients that you're looking at, have you pretty much come up with the, the right dosing, do you think? I think, yes, because this was a dose escalation, and so we, we had two dose levels, and this is the second dose level, and I would say yes, in fact. And there's another trial from the Alliance group, and they've also reached that same dose level, so I would say. So what are you going to do next? That's a great question. <laughs> um, I, I think a couple things. One, obviously, the hope is that you know our data suggests that this is a good regimen. We're going to hopefully, could obviously, follow these patients longer to see can we deepen responses. Durability of response is obviously another key thing when you look at any of these regimens in the relapse setting. You know, giving a, an active regimen if it only lasts two months, you have to ask how much benefit have you done. So, so that's part of what we're going to really be studying now is durability. Looking at patients who have high risk features of their myeloma, so high risk cytogenetics. So 
I didn't present that data, but we do have some of that data as well that looks encouraging. And then the other part of this really would be then how do you build upon this? And it really right. would be using this as a backbone, I would say, for other drugs such as antibodies really is where you, you could see this coming. Um, so a combination of this triplet regimen plus an antibody really would be uh, something of great interest to us. This is really interesting and for an oral therapy, this is a challenging group of people and to think that you have a completely oral regimen for them, I think that's pretty good. We were very encouraged. I mean, my last slide was uh, our patient on the trial who climbed Mount Kilimanjaro. So, oh, yeah. So that's pretty good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> wow. So for ASCO, we have, and uh, ASH Clinical News, we have a variety of stories around. Please take a look at what we have in print as well as here online. And I'm Rick McGuire. I'm an executive editor for American Medical Communications.